Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Chargers, welcome back for another great podcast. I love sharing this information with you because I know it can affect your life and make you take action on something that you need to do. And each week we bring different guests with different viewpoints so you really understand. Now, I do have a favor before we go into the podcast today is I want you to like and share the podcast and rate and review us. I know I talk about this a lot, but that's how more people hear about our podcast and you are the best ones to do that because you're chargers. You're already listening each and every week. We want more people to know about it because then it allows me to get even better guests and more guests. And the nice thing is they always say yes, just like my guest did here. I just recently met her at a conference and I tell you, you're going to love the information that she shares with us. Maurice Delavillers is a high performance coach. She has a passion to helping people grow, be successful and happy. She runs her own business, working predominantly with cybersecurity executives to promote the integral role that people and organizational cultures play in keeping society safe in our digital world. Maurice, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. And it's, I'm delighted to be here. Well, as you can tell from that accent, you're in London, right? Yes, London. I've been uh, here for 16 years. I'm originally from Cape Town in South Africa. Um, so you probably can hear, if you listen carefully, the South African accent, but it is a bit of a twang. <laughs> That's right. Well, we love it, and we're so glad you joined us. We've had a few international guests, and we've had over 50 countries listen to the Charge podcast. So I know you will help us probably reach a few more countries um, with the people you know. So we are just so excited to have you here. Now, before we get started, I always ask everyone the same question. And you and I were at a conference learning about high performance at this conference and, and being certified to be a high performance coach. And that's where we met each other. And we believe habits is what really helps us move forward in life. So my question to you really is, my mantra is charge, create habits around real goals every day. What habit or habits do you think has led to success in your life? So um, I think, Gary, the first time I saw you was actually uh, in the gym at five o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, so I think, I think my whole life I've been very, very um, disciplined in terms of my daily um, ac activity, in terms of exercise and, and my, my food and nutrition. So um, for me, that is absolutely the baseline in terms of how I shape and set, set myself up for success every day is, is to have a really structured exercise program, but also um, my, my food and being really careful with my food and what I eat. That's right. And what's so important now is we're early in 2020. So people have started a new year. And I know some people may be struggling because they started that new habit of exercise. So the thing we want to do is encourage you. Because what you heard Marie say is it becomes a habit. And when it becomes a habit, you want to do it. This morning, I didn't do it. But I have my gym clothes here. And I even brought them in from the car. And they're sitting by my desk. And the reason is, it's my constant reminder all day, when the day ends, I'm going to the gym. And it may sound silly, but because I brought those in, I'm going to do that today. I can guarantee you, and I'll report back to you, Chargers, but I guarantee you I'll go to the gym today because I'm setting my mindset up that, yes, that's going to be part of my activity. I normally do it in the morning, but this morning I decided I'm going to get a little more rest and then be ready for these podcasts. And then this afternoon, I'll do the gym. So that is a great one. I'm glad you shared that because I think it's so important because I know people have started or tried to start 
and maybe they're falling off. And we just want to encourage you that you can continue it and you can make that happen. Now, Maurice, we've got a lot of different things we can talk about because you've got a recent book that you've got out, but we're going to go there. But I, you talked about you have some highlights from a global research study that you conducted on workplace culture. And as you and I talked at the conference, I love culture also. Can you share some of that research and some of that information that you found out in workplace culture? What is so important about that? So the context uh, was really around bullying in the workplace. Um, and uh, it was based on a personal experience that I've had not too long ago, um, which, which led me to, um, to research it, it more. Um, and when I decided to write the book, because I work in an industry where everything has to be scientifically backed up, and I worked in research uh, before as well for four years, I knew that I had to do my own research study because actually the, the research that was out there was, was very old. Um, there's very little research on, on workplace uh, bullying. Hmm. Um, so I decided to do my own study and it was actually really successful. It was a global study and I had about 300 people complete it. Um, so, so it was actually really enlightening um, the, the results from it as well. Um, I think people don't realize that workplace bullying is, is four times more prevalent than um, um, sexual harassment in the workplace wow. um, which is something you know so so in my book I actually call it the silent epidemic um, because it's actually not something where people actually talk about it and I think it's um, it's such a gray area that it's often um, easy for the perp perpetrators to get away with it because the victims um, really speak up, you know, so the majority of people um, who completed my survey um, reported, I mean, over 90% reported that they actually either kept quiet, so I, keep, I, I call it suck it up, or um, actually left quietly because um, <clears throat> they, they couldn't be, um, they, they didn't trust HR to do something, or they just felt that, you know, they wanted to keep their reputation intact. So they left quietly, got a new job. Um, but yeah, that, that was really interesting for me. And, um, you know, the study has shown that 77% of people have actually been a, a victim of bullying or a, or a, a witness. Um, and, you know, of that um, 77%, um, actually 40% of the targets were men. So people often ask me, oh, is this for women? You know, are you writing this book for women? And I'm like, no, I wrote this book for people, for men and women, because we're equally affected by it. I mean, likewise, the perpetrators are often women as well. So in my study, again, 32% of the perpetrators were women. Mm. So um, <clears throat> I think it's, it's really just setting that sort of tone about this is a, this is a problem which affects everybody. And um, it is something which we need to start talking about a lot more. So the whole essence of the book is to encourage people to speak up. And that's why the title of the book is Roar, R-O-A-R. Um, and it's all about people finding that raw, you know, finding the courage and the inner strength to speak up, to say, you know, this is not okay. I deserve to be treated with respect. Well, I think that's some great information. And wow, what a study. Um, and what a great way to really frame up the problem and the challenge to be able to tackle it. So number one, I congratulate you on doing the study and the research that you've been able to find there. One thing is we probably ought to back up a little bit. I probably should ask this first, but I think it still fits. And I think it's right there is for some people, what would you define workplace bullying is and what's some of the characteristics maybe that you see? Because um, sometimes I think they don't know how to define it and they yeah. think this is okay behavior, which it's not. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, the Workplace Bullying Institute, uh, which is based in the States, um, define it as the repeated health harming mistreatment of one or more persons, so the targets, um, by one or more perpetrators. So it's abusive conduct, conduct right? Um, it's either threatening, humiliating or intimidating. Um, it's work sabotage, so work interference, which prevents people from getting the job done. And it's also just plain verbal abuse. Um, so, so really it is about, you know, it is constant, repeated, health-harming mistreatment. And I think that's what we need to remember. It's not necessarily physical. You can't necessarily f see someone physically hurting someone, but it is actually the, the mental, and, um, men men mental impact of the, 
um, of the bullying um, over time, so in my case was four years, really led to me kind of get to a point where I was absolutely at rock bottom, you know, where mentally and physically um, I was kind of falling apart. So it's more the mental abuse than, than the physical abuse I'm, I'm after here. Yeah, I could see that. And, and of course, what we know about high performance, I mean, it's going to affect the productivity of an individual because mentally, if they're, they feel like they're, they are being abused, which they are mentally, it's really going to take the coal, uh, the toll on their workplace habits of what they're doing and their productivity that comes in that. So I guess, can you share as with us how, you know, number one, okay, you've identified it and you've talked about a few things in the book that you've talked about. How do we have this difficult conversation um, without throwing more fuel to the fire to try to get it resolved or get it changed, you know? So, I mean, uh, again, I can honestly say that I've made all the mistakes in the book um, mm -hmm. with my bully. So, so first of all, I just want to pick up on the high performance thing, Gary, because I think that's really important. Um, the bullies in the workplace, they actually target the highest performers um, because the highest performers are more more liked they have more empathy they they just generally get on with people much better so um they are the people who get the job done who shine and a, a bully's mindset you know i'm not talking about accidental bullies here i'm talking about narcissistic extreme narcissistic bullies you know who, who meet that sort of definition i shared earlier they have a winner versus loser mentality so they have to win at all costs um, at the expense of the person they're bullying, you know, and so you can see how they would would target the highest performers because they would want to show that they're better than the best. Um, and so it's extremely costly because the high performers are also the ones that that tend to walk away and find something else to do. So if you lose your best people, you know, it just doesn't make economical sense, does it? So, so I think I think the whole question about how do you actually deal with the bully? So. I think, I think it's important to kind of realize that not, not every time someone's demeaning, it's actually a case of it's intentional. So a lot of the times it's unconscious, you, you're having a bad day, you're stressed, you're tired, um, and you're just snapping at someone because you just don't feel good, you don't feel well. Um, that, that, that I kind of define as, as accidental bully, bullying, provided that as an individual you can actually apologize for your behavior. Um, so I think, I think what I'm talking about here in terms of the real extreme cases are the 1% or 2% of the population who, who really kind of demean uh, to destroy people and it's that sense of entitlement and that sense of exploitation that, that's present in their lives for, for whatever reason. Um, so I've come up, so my book ROAR, R-O-A-R, is also a four-step uh, four process for dealing with difficult situations. Um, so ROAR, if you, if you start with the, the first R, it's recognize the behavior. So I think it's about spotting the bullying behavior. Now, this is the whole point of my book, is to help people spot the behavior, to, to, to be aware of the situations when they are being bullied. So spot the behavior. Then the second letter is O, so observe. So I think when, when someone does that, they actually snap at you and they shout at you or they tell you your shit, sorry for my language, but, but it's kind of that sort of thing. You, you, you get sh you're shocked, right? So you go into kind of a, 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 a neural kind of dissonance, so you don't actually stay present. So by saying observe and stay present, I just want you to sort of stay there, maintain eye contact, um, just stay calm. Um, one of the things that I struggle with a lot is to stay calm. Calm. So recognize the behavior, observe and stay present. Then you go to A, which is uh, assert. So it's very then important to say this is the impact your behavior is having on me or help me understand why, um, why this is a problem and you know what can we do to address it. So it is about asserting your position, holding on to your power, not letting the bully take your power because they can only take it if you give it to them. And then the final R is to redirect. So the whole point about redirecting the conversation towards win-win outcomes. Because there's always in a work context, 
an objective, a goal that we're working towards. So what's beneficial for yourself and the bully to work towards? So redirecting that conversation and using language, inclusive language like us and we, as opposed to I and you, um, really just will help to then transition it to something which is solution-based and outcome-based. Again, Gary, which we learn a lot about in high performance, don't we? So, so a lot of the principles that we apply in our high performance context is also quite relevant in, in, this, in this conversation, having that difficult conversation. Well, congratulations, number one, just the acronym and then being the book title, I just love that. And I'm going to go back through them. Um, for the audience, because of course, I know they may be exercising right now or doing something else active, because when you listen to podcasts, you're normally doing something else. And I think it's very important. So how can we recognize a bully was kind of our conversation there. And it's with the acronym Aurora. So R is recognize, recognize what behavior is taking off there. O is observing, observe the behavior, but stay present when you observe it. So that's where you're going to have to take a little bit of that emotion out, have that emotional yeah. intelligence. So you just don't get mad, angry, those type of things that's there. And then A is assert, you know, assert in, in the, what the impact of the behavior is having, you talked about. And then yeah. R is redirecting that conversation. And I loved how you said in the language is don't make it you, it's make it we, us, those conversation where it becomes an inclusive language and then yes. kind of solution base that's there. Well, yes. I'm sure that's a great read. I'm going to get a copy. Um, I think I've already pre-ordered my copy. I think you had pre-orders. I think I'm already set up for pre-order and I think the copy came in, but I haven't read it yet. So I will get that and I will read the, my, read the book because my problem is my stack is larger than my time inventory. Um, so I'll move it up on the stack now for sure because you're, going to, you're sharing this podcast with all the great guests and all the great information there. I guess as we wrap up that and we start talking about how to live your best life and some of the things we want to talk about in high performance before we leave, what would you tell someone that is in the situation right now? What would you tell them? What should they do? Now, we talked about war having it there, but what would you tell them if they feel like they are one of those victims right now of someone, how can they take action? So, I'll, I'll tell anybody uh, what I did. I did, I did three things and, and it happened over a process of months. So this is not something that just happens. You just, you don't just wake up one morning and then you take action, right? This for me happened over the course of six months. And um, I, first of all, had to get honest with myself. Um, so get honest, get clear and get help. Those are the three things. Uh, I had to get honest because I was very much in denial about my situation um, I, I, I thought that if I walk away, I was going to be a failure. Um, for a long time, I thought I was the problem, to be honest. I thought that, you know, um, if I just do something differently or if, if I deliver something or if, um, prove myself, you know, he, he's going to change. He will, he will be a better, better boss to work for. And of course that, that was a lie I was telling myself. Um, so yeah, so get, get honest is the first step. And then I guess the, the clarity, get to get clarity for me was all around, I'm finding myself in a work context, but I kind of felt like a square peg in a round hole. Um, so I had to get really honest with myself about, am I doing my life's work or am I doing busy work? And I think that was a big realization for me um, that I wasn't really doing my, my life's work anymore. So um, that also led to me then starting my own business and then I guess the third step about getting help. So the very, very first thing I did when I left was to actually sign up with a coach, a transformation coach, uh, to, to get my health back on track. So this was a holistic program where I worked with four, for four months with a coach to get my mental, my physical health back on track. Um, and I had tremendous results, you know, um, in that program. But I went into that program. So for those of you who have set these New Year's resolutions, um, and it's in January, um, go into your program or your objectives or whatever you want to do with a, with a this is for life mindset. So I very much went into that program thinking, I'm doing this for life. This is not just a quick fix. Um, and I've been able to maintain the results um, as a result. So, um, yeah, well, get honest, 
get clear, get help. <laughs> Excellent advice for you. And I want you to hear that because we want you to get that because otherwise, as you talked about in the very beginning, mentally, it is going to affect you. And it's not affecting you just at your work. It's affecting you at home. And you heard Marie tell us about physically, she talked about she was a very healthy person and is that person. And that even dissipate it because of course you feel like you're defeated. So if you need that and remember bullying is not just children, it's happening in the workplace every day. The other thing I'd highly recommend to them. And I think this is a great place for you to share that if they wanted to get a copy of your book, where's the best place that they should go. And if you want to share your website here, please go right ahead. Yeah. So, um, my website is marilise-de-villiers.com. Um, so, I mean, we can always, I don't know if you can share a link um, on the podcast or some, but it's, it's if, if you if you type in Marilise de Villiers, um, I should come up, my website should come up. Um, it's available on Amazon. Um, again, you know, Marilise de Villiers, raw. You can find it that way. Um, but yeah, I'm on social media. I'm ac active on social media. So uh, very active on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. So um, again, if you, if you type in my name, uh, you, I should pop up. Um, and yeah. we'll have it all in show notes too. So if you are doing something now and can't, we'll have that link for the website on there because some of us are wondering like myself, how do you spell that? Um, I've got it in front of me. So don't worry. That's in show notes. It's under chargepodcast.com. So if you go there, Chris does a great job of putting those notes in there and all the information about the book and have the links of how that you can get that. So please check that out. Well, let's go from that because bullying is, I think, a very important topic, but it's also now how can we take the next step? And you kind of set us up very well with that because you had this struggle yourself and you knew you had to change something for yourself and you decided to create a new vision and new clarity for yourself that you're wanting to do, starting a business, writing a book, and she's doing some great things, folks. So let's talk about how do we go about living our best life? And what does that mean to you to be able to live the best life? You shared a little bit there, but I know there's more packed into that. So I think others can see it because there's a lot of us in this 2020, they decided this is the year and the decade they're going to make that change. And yes. we want to help them make that change. So how can they live their best life? And what does that mean to you? So and, and, I, and I don't want, I would just want to sort of start by saying, you know, I, I'm still figuring it out. Um, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a journey that we're on forever. Um, so we never really get to the, to the, to the answer. I think it's, it's kind of based on what I know today and the, the, the work that I've done over the last couple of years, um, which kind of landed me in a place where I was, was able to kind of say, okay, I'm actually going to write a book. And actually the, the last five chapters in the book is all about how to live your best life. So it's only really the first three chapters, which is around bullying, but then it's about how do we overcome this now? How do we make our best lives a reality? So there is, again, there's a model in the book that I've developed, which has got five steps in it. Um, the very first step is, is find, finding or reigniting your purpose. So it's all about being really clear on your purpose and the, and the why. Um, and I often say to people, you, you need to find a why that is bigger than yourself. Um, so why bother is, is really, really important. The second one for me is all about momentum. So the momentum comes from the belief that you can do it, but also from taking massive action, right? Um, and then once you've decided you're going to take action, you need a game plan. So step three is game plan. Um, and so the game plan, it's important to realize that the game plan isn't fixed. The game plan changes as you go, right? So for me writing the book, I think I was on game plan number five by the time I finished it, right? So I had to constantly re, um, re, you know, reassert, re kind of imagine the, the game plan because I kept missing deadlines, but there were good reasons for it. But the main thing is I kept going. I didn't give up. I didn't quit, you know. So I think that's really, really important. Um, step four then for me is all about creativity. So I'm a very creative being, um, and I believe we all are, you know. Creativity comes from your thoughts, you know. Um, 
we often think creativity as being an artist or being a music musician. No, it's actually every, every, every single one of us have been um, born to be creatives and to innovate and to create new things and thoughts. And I, and I think, you know, the, the sooner we realize that creativity is such an important part of our being and who we are, I think, you know, it will serve a lot of people. So creativity for me is all about painting pictures, thinking outside the box, connecting the dots, um, and that for me was really important, you know, in terms of getting kind of through the process of writing the book. And then five is to, is, is ability. So it's all about getting the skills, the knowledge and the skills and the habits um, to do it. And the reason why it's number five is that you've got to be able to trust in your ability to figure figure it out. Now, Gary and I hear this a lot from our mentor, uh, Brendan Bouchard, but it's that sort of, you know, I put it last because it is genuinely, I had no idea when I started writing the book how I was actually going to finish the book um, until it was actually done. Um, so I really, from the beginning, had to trust in my ability to fig figure it out. So yeah, th th there you go. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, and it is all about consistency at the end of the day and sticking, sticking to it, not quitting, you know, because of course I get my days where I'm also rather just lie on the couch or just you know, chill or, and, and, and I think that's also a sign that you need a break sometimes, you know, so being kind to yourself, I think is, is incredibly important. Um, I cannot emphasize that enough. Maurice, I tell you, you've got some great systems. I love how you broke the book down. I love those five. I mean, how to really set yourself up so you live your best life. I've got a saying, a quote that I've used before is, it's your life. Why not live the life that you want? Yes. And that's the key. It's your life. I mean, we're going in, this is a new year, but it's a new decade. 2020 starts a new decade. And if you really can look at that big picture, what do you want your life to be 2029? I guarantee you, if you decide to put the time and effort into it, and I know you would agree with me, they can achieve that. Yeah, Will absolutely. they achieve everything? I don't know that but you can live the life that you truly want. And that's what we're talking to you because high performance is about living, being fully engaged and truly being in that moment of living the joy and satisfaction that you get. And one of the areas you talked about is so important in that is having the clarity. So the question we ask you is what is that clarity for you? Well, we are coming up, we could go on and on, I think, because as you all know, I told you I became a good friend with her at the conference and just by having some great conversation. And when she told me about the book, I thought of the audience right away, you chargers saying, I've got to get Maurice on the um, call on the podcast so she can share that information with us. But before we go there, what would you tell, i have given my little spiel there, what would you tell someone that says, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but. Let's take the butt out. What would you tell them? How can they do it? They can do it. I know they can. But from yeah. your side of it, you tell them from your aspect of it. What encouragement would you tell them to move forward? I think, I think for me, it has to be um, just have a go. Um, don't think about it too much. You know, you want, you want to do something. You have the desire. You know it's in you. Um, but the moment we start negotiating with ourselves, we're bound to, lo to lose, right? Um, so I always talk about my non-negotiables being my food and my exercise. Um, but it is, it's that sort of, you've got to start somewhere and just have a go. Don't expect too much, but just, just, just start, I guess, is, is my main thing. Um, it, it sounds terribly simple, Gary. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it's true. But if they don't start, and, you know, some of them made that, resolution or goal at the beginning of the year and now it's several days weeks have went by and they've not started so i think it's a great one yeah just get started don't worry about all the steps but start the first step you can't do the thing unless you do the first step. well great great advice there i appreciate you sharing that i put you on the spot there but i just wanted to see because i think it's really about getting started and we want that for you because you have that capability to build the life that you want well, we're going to go into the recharge round. I ask every guest these questions, and they're kind of my framework that I like to speak about with audiences, and um, I write about also. But one of them, we talked some about this, but we didn't specifically say the word. 
but how do you believe your mindset affects your daily living? It's everything. Um, so that's why chapter, chapter six in my book is winning the inner game. Um, because I, I have to work on my mindset every day and, um, our thoughts are so, so powerful and it's, it's hardwired in our, in, in who we are, in our beings. And so if, if you have limiting beliefs, if you have fears, it's really important that you do the work daily in terms of overcoming those, in terms of rewiring your, your, your thoughts. Great advice. Great advice. Cause our thoughts, that's what creates our actions. And you change those thoughts, you're going to change your actions. What do you do daily? We talked about exercise, but I'm going to take you away from exercise because they've heard that from you. But what do you do? Like, let's say we get done with this podcast. Let's be honest. We both get a little bit of charge out of this. We get energy from that. But now you've got to get in a project maybe that's tough. What do you do those times where you have something that's tough that you need to get done to have that energy to be able to move forward with it, be able to complete that task or that project or to get started on it? Yeah. So, um, again, I do the mindset work daily. Um, I, <laughs> I do something called inner size, which not very many people have actually heard of, but it's a concept, um, by John, John Asaraf. Um, and he's got a company called Nero gym and I discovered this last year, but it is really very much a positive psychology, um, almost like a, a daily meditation that I do. Um, just to sort of set my, my frame, my frame of mind up. Um, and, and, and for me, that, that's really worked. So it doesn't have to be that, but I think it's that sort of getting quiet and getting still and having that time where you can just really, um, um, you know, the sort of get, get into your thoughts, but, 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 but work, work on that sort of gratitude, the positive affirmations. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I try to do that daily because I really see and notice the difference in my day um, when I've done it and when, when I've not done it. Um, and I guess it's about intention for me as well. Mm -hmm. So I work in a corporate setting every day. Um, so when I show up in the office um, at my clients, um, you work with a lot of our souls every day. Um, people that want to kind of bring you down and want to kind of pull you down. And, and, and so you've got to really be intentional in terms of how you interact with people and showing up with that energy to, because it does, it does impact them, you know, even though you're not physically saying anything or doing anything, but your energy really, really in how you show up um, really does, does make a difference. So for me, it's about intention as well, thinking about my day before I go to the office and, and kind of playing it out before it actually happens really helps me. Great, great advice. How about the number one connection or it could be the relationship that's made the biggest impact on your life? One relationship. Gosh, there's so many. I think it, it's got to be my husband. Um, <clears throat> so we've been, I mean, we've been together for 17 years now. And I've only really recently discovered that he's actually been my life coach all along. Um, so we've always been in a, in a very, um, in a partnership based relationship. So we don't have, we call it blue or pink jobs. <laughs> um, we're, we're in this together. So he's been a very, very hands-on dad whilst mum pursue, pursues career and do all the crazy things like writing a book. Um, but yeah, he's, he's just always been my biggest cheerleader, my biggest support. So yeah, I, I genuinely have to say it's, it's him. And, and, you know, we continue to go from strength to strength. And um, I've realized that, you know, two years ago when I was in that horrible space where um, I had to leave my corporate job um, because of the bully, um, that I really neglected that relationship, you know, and the relationship with my children as well. So it was, it was hard work building it back up again. It took a good six months, but uh, that's the, whole, the, whole, the one thing I hold dearest now is my relationship with him and, and our two, two boys. Wow. Congratulations. Sounds like a great guy. I can't, get, can't wait till sometime we're at the same conference and I'll get to meet him in person yeah. that's there. How about the advice that's influenced you the most in your life? So it will have to be the fact that progress... Um, well, perfection is the enemy of good enough. Um, I, had a, I had a boss that, um, that used to 
to really challenge me because I would always want to get everything perfect before I submit it or, you know, my, my version of perfect. I mean, what is perfect? It's mm -hmm. not even, you know, it's just my version of perfect. So, but he used to really, really challenge me to say, you know, and, 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 and perfection also leads to procrastination and all that sort of, you know, bad habits, you know, so, I have a daily mantra now where I'm saying progress, not perfection, progress, not perfection. So I think that it will have to be that, um, that one. Well, and I hope people hear that because that may help them in something that they're doing. And you actually yeah. helped me when we met at the high performance conference, because I was struggling getting the rest of my book wrote and you and I visited on that and I have now finished that and it's going to awesome. be out. Um, we're not sure the exact date, but the March, April time frame we're shooting for to have my next book out. So thank Yay. you very much for that. And because I was trying to do perfection and I wasn't doing the last part of the writing that I needed to do. And through your conversation, it really made me realize just get started and get it done. And don't worry about the perfection. Number one, you got editors that will help you with that part. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well done, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So how about a book that you love and share why um, you love that book? Oh my goodness. Uh, so many. Yes. <laughs> I've also got a stack like you to get, to get through. Um, one of them is the infinite game by Simon Sinek, which I'm, which I'm going through, which I'm absolutely loving at the moment. So I love leadership books, but on a personal level, um, the, book, the, the book this year that I've read so far, uh, it's been the best book for me, has been um, Michelle Obama's book, um, Becoming. I just really, really enjoyed that. And I love listening to audio books um, and just listening to her, uh, her voice and just the incredible, remarkable woman uh, she is and the incredible, remarkable things that, you know, she's, she's done in her life and continue to do, you know, um, I think for me, it is, it, it is about that bigger purpose that making the difference in the world. Um, and, you know, it really inspired me because it reminded me, you know, that this job that I'm doing now is so much bigger than me. Um, so yeah, has to be Michelle Obama's book. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be like her. You're changing the world one person at a time. And just by putting the information that you're putting out in that book, that's going to make such a difference in people's lives. So I congratulate you on that. How about the last question? You've almost made it through the recharge round. What <laughs> legacy do you want to leave the world? Kindness. I just want people to be consciously kind. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm doing this at the moment in a workplace context, but I mean, as a family, we wake up every morning. So I have a, I have a poster in the house, which is, you know, work hard, play hard and be kind. Um, so it has to be kindness 100%. Well, you have been so kind to join us on the Charge Podcast <laughs> and our audience, I guarantee you, have loved the conversation that we have because you've been so giving and so open and so many different nuggets. I, I took a page and a half notes myself, folks, um, from the information that she shared with us. And don't worry, we'll have great show notes. So if you want to go back to look at those, Chris will have those at chargepodcast.com. But before I let you go, release, would you share again how they can reach you? And we'll have the spelling and everything there for your website so they hear it one more time and also the name of the book. So if they want to reach out and get that book, because I think there's going to be some people want to get a copy after hearing your conversation. Fat, fat, thanks, thanks, Gary. So the book is Roar, R-O-A-R, exclamation mark, <laughs> um, how, how to tame the bully inside and out. And it's by Marilise de Villiers Basson. So Basson is my married surname. We didn't even go there, Gary. <laughs> um, <laughs> she would have another tough one for me to pronounce. <laughs> I'm like, I was not going to do that to you today. So uh, my website is marilise-de-villiers.com. And um, same name on social media. So all the socials, Insta, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. But we'll have, we'll have the details in the notes, I believe. Yes. Marlies, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been so great. The number one visit with you again. We did that at the conference. And the biggest part is how much you shared with our audience, because I know the Chargers are going to walk away with something that they can take action on. Because I say it's great to hear information, but it's different when you take action. So 
Chargers, let's again thank Marlies for joining us. Thank you again for being here. And Chargers, my biggest thing I want to just leave you with, what is the action that you're going to move forward with? How can you make your life better? You're going to get some of that clarity. If you have that bullying, check out her book. Whatever it is for you, decide what that is and then move forward each and every day. And then, of course, come back next week because we'll have another great guest sharing some great information with you. And we thank you for being with us today. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.